let's review how to design soft goods in Onshape, specifically the suspension straps for this hard hat. I have most of my assembly completed already, and we can even see inside of that assembly that I have these fittings already in position. Now, when I wanna create the straps, I'm gonna to have to create an in-context part studio using some of these assembly references to create my straps to make sure that they fit. You can see here in my in-context part studio now, the components that are grayed out from the assembly that we were just looking at. And I can use these as references for creating some mate connectors to begin my sketch process. These mate connectors will be located in between the loopholes of the fittings that we've shown already in the assembly. In this case, I'm gonna to choose to add the mate connectors in between the faces of the loophole and choose no owner entity because this isn't gonna be important to my assembly down the line. I can realign my mate connectors to align more with the direction that I want my sketch to be created in. And now we have our first mate connector. I'll do the same thing again on the back of my design to give me two points to cross create for when I create the straps. Once again, I'll use the between entities option for all of these mate connectors that I'm selecting. Now that I have my mate connectors in place, I wanna go into my assembly context menu and hide any instances that aren't actually going to be important to the creation of these straps. Now that I have a clean design, I can start designing my sketches. I'm gonna start by sketching on the first mate connector that I had selected. I'm gonna use the spline tool to create a free form loop for what will be the end of the straps that I'm working on. I just have a couple of control points that I'm gonna define here, and it doesn't need to be anything crazy or really true to parametric design because this is gonna be more of a free form soft good anyways. However, I do wanna make sure that my straps at their endpoints are parallel with one another and that they're going between that mate connector that I just created. After some small adjustments to make sure that this is going to look true to what it may possibly look like in real life design, now I have my first sketch complete. In order to design my first surface for the model, I'm actually gonna extrude this out and I'm gonna choose to symmetrically add the surface between my loop. Now I have the beginning of my straps. Instead of designing that spline surface again, however, I'm gonna use Onshape's transform tool to transform the surface that I just created by mate connectors. I can choose to move it from that first mate connector to the back mate connector that I created in my second step. If at any point I need to rotate it around a certain mate connector, then I'm able to do so. And I'm actually gonna select copy part. So now I have both ends of the straps available here for me. Now to go ahead and start to actually connect these components, this is where Onshape's curve functionality will really come into play. I can use a bridging curve to select the midpoint of the strap and choose to be related to the surface of that first strap end. And I'll do the same thing on my other back strap. Now we begin to have a bridging curve between these two surfaces. This bridging curve, however, is pretty shallow and we wanna have a little bit more room for somebody to put this actually on their head. With Onshape's curve capabilities, I can come in and use the edit curve function to actually change the parameters of the bridging curve that I just created. Within edit curve, I can choose to approximate this curve. I can choose to elevate it, planarize it, or even just edit the control points. In this case, I wanna create a new control point in the middle of this curve. So that's what I'm doing here by elevating it. I can also come in and choose to edit that control point. What you'll notice is that these endpoints for control points that were created to be constrained to those surfaces aren't changing when I do this. So it's maintaining the continuity that I originally defined within my bridging curve. Now I have my first curve available. And the last step, just to really point this out, is gonna be to change this and give it a curve appearance so that we can clearly see this as I'm making more changes. 
This is only one side of my straps. However, I wanna make sure that the other straps that I create are going to be relatively the same as the one that I first started with. So I can use the part mirror function to mirror both these surfaces and the curves along the right plane. Now I have two identical strap setups that are set up along this right plane. I can start to go ahead and use lofting features now to actually build out the middle of these straps. I'm gonna loft from one edge of that original loop surface to the other. And use that path feature within the loft to actually use the bridging curve that we just created as a connection between those two points. I now have my very beginning strap created. However, what I'm able to see here is that there's actually going to be intersection between these two straps if I just use the original curve that I mirrored to start out with. So I can use the edit curve feature again to go ahead now and just edit the control point location to make sure that there's enough distance between the two straps because that is gonna be used for the top strap. Now I can go ahead and create my other loft that'll once again have the same continuity requirements at the endpoints and also use the path of the curve that was just edited once again to define the connection points between these two lofts. Now I have two of these straps created in the context of my original assembly. To make sure that they're gonna fit properly, I can go ahead and actually toggle the visibility of the hard hat assembly. I wanna make sure that this will fit directly within the hard hat model that we're working on here. And to get some full clarity, I'm gonna take a section cut across the right plane. However, I'm going to exclude those curves and surfaces that I just created so we get them in full visibility. I see here that there's a little bit more room that I could have these straps created with inside the helmet. Since these were parametrically linked between the mirror feature, I can go in, turn on final mode for my edit curve that I started with originally and move these curves around. Now these references will update for both the original strap and the second strap that I created. And we'll even see how editing the first edit curve updates the second edit curve feature as well. I now have these features completed and I have the surfaces done for my design. The last step before I insert this into my assembly will be to thicken both of the surfaces that I've created here. And I only need to thicken these a quarter of a millimeter. Now I start to begin to have parts for my design. The last thing I'll do before inserting these into my assemblies is give them some metadata. I wanna make sure that everything in here is able to be understood. I have my first part and my second part. I can give them part numbers if I needed to, but more importantly, I wanna make sure that they match the appearance of what I'll expect them to look like in the physical design itself. I have these parts now and I can insert them into my assembly. I'm gonna to choose to bring both of these in. And since they were created in context, they're already in the right position. I can use Onshape's group functionality that I already used for these fittings to include the straps. So now they're fully constrained within the design. This has been integrated into my entire helmet assembly and I can see them now and how they'll fit within the design itself. As a final step here, I know that these straps, I'm gonna to wanna to cut out of a soft good material. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and rename that part studio. And I can use Onshape's flattened surface functionality to select the faces of one of these straps. I'll be able to flatten that surface, visualize what the flat pattern would look like, and even offset it if I need to. In addition to this, to make sure I'm actually able to cut out the flat pattern of this design, I can choose some export controls and export a DXF of this flat pattern. Now I can export that out and send it to whoever may need it downstream. Since we are using Onshape, and Onshape documents are an environment where everybody can store their data, so not just parts, assemblies, and drawings, but other materials as well, 
for anybody who needs to use this at a later date, I can go ahead and import in that DXF that I just created. This will be added into my Onshape document. I can visualize the DXF of the flat pattern of these straps right here in the CAD environment itself. And I can even revision control this if need be. All of this completes my design. I now have these soft goods included in my model. And we've seen here how surfacing, curves, and surface flattening can allow you to work on soft goods within Onshape.